Hey, what's good everyone? This is Martin and today we have a new video. Um, in case you didn't know, uh, SGP West dropped his new album today called Celestial 2 and I have three tracks I produced in it and there's one that really stood up to me and it's the beat of the track D1. I think it's track number six if I'm not wrong. And this is a track that I made almost a year ago and I co-produced it with my Brazilian friend Nova Chance. And today we're talking and we figured, why don't we make a video covering how we made this like regalia ambient type beat. And so I have him here in Discord. I don't know if you want to say something. Hi. Yo, yo, what's good? What's good? <laughs> so I'm Nova. I'm from Brazil. And I'm trying to show y'all how I, I did like the idea for the beat. Yeah. First of all, I started with like that piano. That piano comes from piano book and like this and Semper. Piano book is a website when you where you can get like free free banks. It's basically like contact, but it's free. And it sounds like this. So it's a pretty basic loop. Uh, I use that progression quite a lot, like the bass. I usually just start with like the bass notes. And here, uh, I probably did like the the, the strumming. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably it, it looks it looks like this. Yeah, so it's basically like a human eyes thing type thing. Then after that, I just copy and, and paste that to another layer uh, that was that one pad um, it sounds like that oh that's pretty sweet yeah yeah I record that with like uh, it's called um, Volca Keys uh, oh. from Car. it's yeah, yeah it's a synth. really like budget synth yeah mm -hmm. really small synth like really cheap too and then I recorded that on a small like cassette cassette tape that's why you have like that noise oh wow on the background so just that layer sound like that uh, uh, I just probably just did is that as a like some kind of ambience yeah like a layer yeah 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 that one that one is actually copy and paste so that one is just uh, one preset that I really like from. Oh, that sounds really dope. You know, yeah. from like ambient pads, so I use a lot of that, like that bank from Xenology, and I just turn it the release down, so with no effects, it sounds like that. Oh, okay. It has like this little flickering to it, like it adds yeah, like extra notes. It, has, it sounds like it already has parto or some type of granular synthesis on it already. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted something like kind of more darker and more septo, so I added like some effects on it. So the first one. Oh, wow. Then I added just like a normal like halftime mm -hmm. thing. And then, like, one of my favorite, like, VSTs, uh, Valhalla Shimmer. Amazing reverb, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Just, like, a touch of it, like, it's on 50 of the mix now. For the piano, let me show that without effects, too. So, the piano without no effects, it sounds like that. Oh, it really adds a lot. Wow, it changes so much. Yeah. I really like to develop my sound in the mixing process. Yeah. So wait, and you said that that's a free piano. Like it, it literally could sound yeah. like contact, like three hundred dollar contact banks. Yeah. Wow. It's really like a sauce. Y'all should like download Decent Sampler and Piano Book. It's like amazing. It has Damn. a lot of great things. So first, I added like the default like delay of Valhalla delay. Mm -hmm. 
then I added some more like Valhalla Shimmer with these settings using the reverse mode, uh, feedback, medium stereo. It sounds like that with both. Just like slide more ambience. Yeah. Like, it's mono. Oh, I see. Yeah, because yeah, like, sense. yeah, I just recorded that on like a tiny tape, so it's mono. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that with no effects. And then what I did was just throw a lot of ambience on it, so it sounds like a drone. That it's uh, actually pretty much used in other types of ambient music, like uh, with people that use mostly analog gear, like a lot of synths in like tape stuff, they use a lot of drones that is just uh, usually just like one or two notes really long into a lot of reverb, delays, modulations. And it's just kind of like a sort of ambience. So the first EQ, it's like that. Um, oh it yeah, makes I can it, hear it. It makes it more like kind of fuller and less bright at the same time and removing some sort of the noise that was there from the tape. Then I added some more like of Valhalla bundle, the Valhalla space mode later. Mm -hmm. I just added that preset from Barber Pole, Flange Down. So with the EQ and the flanger, it sounds like that. So the flanger was to get it more like stereo because the original sound was mono. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I just add um, a reverb. Oh, wow, yeah. So it starts to get everything kind of blurry together. After that, um, I, had I just added a plugin. Like, yeah, it's actually free too. Oh wow! It's another yeah, it's another sound. Uh, Cymat Cymatic is origin, so it's another like tape emulation. Even though it's already recorded on tape, I really enjoy like tape sound. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like I didn't tweak it much. It's I feel like yeah, it's just the original. So after I add the Cymat Cymatic's origin plugin. I just added another reverb, so it sounds like that. Uh... Yeah, that, it's really impressive how you made like most of the sounds in this like um, in this loop, either with your synth or with like free plugins. Yeah, I feel like at that time I was trying to experiment instead of just working with like easy like plugins that already have like a sound because yeah. uh, I feel like you can get more texture and can get your own type of sound like if you turn your things into something like when you mix and you change your sound like no one can get that same sound because yeah. I recorded that myself and just mixed it. The last thing uh, but not least it was that Reese bass. So for the Reese bass, it was like kind of same thing. I just recorded that from the vocal keys. Pretty basic mixing. I just cut it off the low lows. The subs of it, I just cut it. Uh, after that, I added that uh, VST X, X Factory from Waves Factory. Uh, that one, I I don't see many people using it. Yeah, I, like I have never seen it before. Mostly for people that do mixing. Yeah, like I do. I usually mix too, so I I just like that VST. Pretty basic. I just did like. A really boost here, so it sounds less dark and more like up front in a way. Yeah, I just wanted, I really wanted that like kind of noisy feeling. Uh, really, that's it. So, on the master, there's nothing but a soft clipper. Uh, I don't like the limiter, <laughs> of FL. I, I always advise everyone to like 
just change it for like a soft yeah. flipper. Just like, take at, out at the limiter. Learn. Like, e like ju it's better not to have anything than the default limiter. So yeah, the basically is it? Let me play y'all the loop, uh, so y'all can see. Yeah, I remember I you actually sent this loop to me while I was on a live stream. So there's yeah. a chance that there's still the live stream of me making this beat. So now actually let me share my FL Studio. So nah, I'm gonna show yeah. I'm gonna show how I actually made the rest of the beat. Um so the first thing I did when I got the loop is I started with this piano right here. Um the piano I am using in this situation is the Grandeur. Um, by Native Instruments. So it's a pretty simple piano, grand piano, uh, nothing weird about it. And it sounds like this. I added these like last three um, very low notes at the end because I wanted this like piano to be the like drop for the beat, if that makes sense. Um, I also have, yeah, this pattern right here, which is pretty much the same. It just like tweaked a little, like little. You have these like low notes here and they are like, like more quiet now, but it's pretty much the same concept. It's just like a piano I added on top of the loop because I, I thought like it needed some more like movement, if that makes sense. And the piano by itself can sound a little bit weird, uh, but once you add it to the loop, it like makes sense, if you know what I'm saying. And then the, the second thing I added is those, these strings. So this is actually a free bank for contact. Um, it's the free orchestra at Sordano Violence, and I was actually using this bank a lot at the time. And it sounds like this, pretty much. Basically, this is the same, but like pitched up an octave. Um, I don't know if Nova uses this like technique a lot, but one thing I do is usually, for example, when I'm making pianos in ambient, I'll turn them really down in velocity so they sound really soft. But then I'll come here into yeah. contact and I'll turn the volume up of the BST. So like the soft piano is like amplified and sounds louder. And that's why the piano sounds like this. Because if it was at normal velocity, it would probably sound like this. And it's like nothing I like, you know. If you want like a really soft sound, uh, this is what I usually do. I just put the velocity down and then add it volume later on. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a, a great way to add some type of like human, human emotion in there. Because when you're playing everything digitally, when you turn down the, the velocity, it just sounds more subtle. Yeah. So yeah, it's really cool to mess with the velocity of things. The last thing I, I really added to the melody is this these strings right here. They're also from uh, Project Sam, the free orchestra. And yeah, it's called short strings. There's, as you might see, two patterns. One of them is at normal pitch and one of them is pitched up an octave. Um, but it sounds like this, basically. I wanted to have like a lead melody, like a, something you could memorize.
actually, actually, because I, I, I passed this project from Windows to Mac. Um, so I lost the contacts and I had to like look back for the presets. One thing I did here in this plugin is this is a little trick for every contact user here. As you might see, there's like this area in blue on your keyboard, which means the notes you can play. So let's say I want to play notes that are out of this range. There is a way to play them. If I want to like turn my melody one octave up, I'm going to come in here to tune and I'm going to type 12. And basically, this is going to turn everything one octave up. So the notes might look the same. They are the same. But it's playing one octave up. And that's what I did here. To like um, play them one octave, one octave up higher. Because like the, the bank wouldn't let me do it normally. So I had to do this. And one thing I usually have a hard time with is like deciding, okay... I'm done with this melody. I'm not going to mess up with it anymore. I am good with it. So usually just like stick for like way longer than I should adding stuff. But once once I already had this, I was like, okay, I am done with the melody. I can finally move on. So the first thing I did was the intro. Actually, once I had everything laid down, I made this intro. And this thing right here, um, this was meant to be like the first part of my samples on SoundCloud, like my snippets. So I actually sampled the original recording of when I made my producer tag. This is a part that SGP cut off the, the original track. So all this part right here, you won't hear it, but this is how it sounded like. Yeah, you can do it now. Tonto. Tonto. And so, yeah, there's this intro and there's some ambience over here. So I feel like everything I added to the melody and everything Nova sent me like um, mixed really, really well. One thing I forgot yeah. to add is that I the only thing I really added to the piano is some delay. It's always timeless three, but nothing else. I tried to leave this melody like as raw as possible, like as, yeah, as humane as possible. So for the drums, they're really, really simple. Um, as I usually do, I just follow the root notes of my 808. So this is the first one, uh, the, the root notes of the melody, I'm sorry. So yeah. All the drums are from my toolkit. Um, it's over 100 808s and 100 claps. It's like three gigabytes. It's like a huge kit I dropped like well over a year ago. Actually, this is not the original 808. The original 808 sounds like this. So I came into Edison and I cut the 808 like this. And then like this. And I exported it back into FL Studio. So now it kind of looks like this. So I just wanted to give it like some attack to almost make it like a really short sub. And yeah, it sounds like this. It's something I, I do a lot whenever I want to make subs and I want to have like a one time sounding sub. I'll just grab an 808 and I'll cut it. Uh, later on in the beat, I made another pattern. And yeah, in this case, I, I kept it pretty much like this. But yeah, it's just a sub. Both are from the kit. It's a pretty simple pattern because when you're making regalia type beats, I don't know what's, no what's Nova's opinion on this, but I like to keep my drums pretty simple because I, I think the focus is on the melody really, not so much in the drums. What do you think? Yeah, I feel like there's kind of like two types of regalia. Like one type's gonna be focusing on the melody. Yeah. That's gonna be like really busy and like kind of epic. Or it could be like the opposite, like kind of more like a simpler melody, but the drones going like crazy and faster, like usually usually on triplets. Like usually when yeah. the drones is the triplets and like have like snare rows and etc. like that, you gotta have like less thing less things on the melody but yeah i i agree with that like um so these are the two 808 patterns and you know they're following the chord progression um i have a regular clap right here oh, it's a say clap it's the most average you can go you know it's like yeah. 
it's a sound everybody has heard everybody knows even if you have never listened to like hip-hop or rapper or trap or anything you know this sound anybody can recognize it um so i usually use i usually tend to just use that clap because it's like a very comfortable sound you know you cannot go wrong with it yeah and so the last thing i added was these hi-hats which they're pretty simple one thing i was doing a lot when i made this beat which i actually made almost one year ago because i made this um uh september 3rd so yeah that's in like two weeks so the hi-hats one thing i really like to do was to add a lot of velocity change so you can see down there that there's a lot of variation and without any effects it sounds like this And in case you're wondering what I had preset that is, I think it's the one I have on this kit right here. Um, so yeah, you just drop it in there. It's in the toolkit. Um, um, so that's literally it for the drums. It's super simple. And here for the Reese, I actually used it the same one that uh, Nova sent me. So it's this Reese right here. So one thing you can do if you're very lazy like me is, you know, one thing I rarely ever do when somebody sends me loops is use the stems. Because it just kind of takes time. <laughs> so one thing I usually do is, if you hear this loop, you have the reese like this. And so I grabbed the stems and I basically added like the reese on top of it. Just to make it sound like extra loud. And in the areas where I wanted the Reese not to sound, I would just cut the loop, like, just like this. Let's say this this went like this. I would just cut it like this. Then I would do, um, make, make unique a sample, and I would click this preset called reverse polarity. So basically what this does is, it's a very simple physics concept. And it's when you have two waves that they, they are the same. Let's say we have two sine waves. If you have two equal sine waves and one of them you reverse them, once you like add them together, they will they, they will do something called destructive interference. They will cancel out each other. And basically, if I added this reese, like this re reverse, like this like uh face reversed reese on top of the actual melody, it will cancel out just like this. So I really just play with that. There, there's not that much to this beat, really. Um, like, I feel like the drums are fairly simple, and at least the melodies on my side are fairly simple. Um, but I just feel like it, it came together so well. And I remember sending this beat out to a bunch of people, and nobody really using it. And then, Same. yeah, one day I just like, I, I think I was walking home or something, and I checked my phone. And I see like an Instagram like notification and it was like uh you sending me a video of like SGB West story on a track produced yeah. by us. Yeah. And it was just crazy. I was like, wow, this really is happening. Like that was my first like actual placement, like major placement like that, you know? Yeah. So same thing, like I did the the loop on August and it was just like something like just just a loop. And then when I sent that to you and you sent me back the the beat, I felt like it was something something else. Like I really liked the beat, and I also sent to a bunch of people, a lot of people, a lot of artists that I feel like would really go on the beat, and it it ended up like no one using them. Like I never got like anything back. Yeah. And but I had that feeling of 
really enjoying that one beat. Like I really felt that it was something special. So I kept sending it. And it's something that I feel like when you really enjoy a work or something, you should really just be consistent on it. Like, because sometimes we gotta like, we dub to ourselves, like, because no one is, is using something, but like, you just gotta keep on like pushing it, like, until it finds the place, the right place. Definitely. So I ended up like sending it, like, I feel like I sent just like that month, like this month, I just sent the beat and like, one or two days after, like, SGP, like, drop it, they snip it. Yeah. Which was really quick. That's one thing I, I want, like, any producer watching this to know is, like, don't lose hope. Because sometimes you'll make a beat and you'll think, oh, this is so crazy. Like, this is my favorite beat. Because at the time when I made this beat, this was one of my favorite beats for sure. And I think it still is. Like, I think yeah, it, it captures, like, a really special emotion. And that's why I love it so much. Um... But, you know, don't lose hope if your beat doesn't get used. Just keep pushing. Some Someday, somebody will listen to it and they'll think, oh, this is for me. That's it. And Thanks. so, yeah, just keep it pushing, man. You got this. And so, yeah, that was pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, I hope to see you in the next one. And, well, thank you so much, Nova, for your time. And, you know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, hope you all can learn something from the video. And I'm happy to, happy to help on that, for sure. So, yeah, I'll see you guys next. Thank you.